What's up everybody, it's me, your favorite little boy in the whole wide world, Ren with two N's. And before you drag your little prepubescent finger over that dislike button, just hear me out real quick. I actually think that Fortnite is a pretty decent little game, but there is a lot, and I mean a lot, that is holding it back and keeping it from truly being great. So one of the reasons I'm making this video is in the hopes that the game we all play can maybe get better. So with that being said, there are a lot of sizable issues that need to be dealt with in this game. Issues that I haven't heard anybody else talking about. So listen to me real good, little Timmy, because you just might learn something. And if you've been a fan of mine for a while, you'll notice that this video is going to have a much faster pace than you're used to. Because I can only assume that this video is going to attract a lot of children to it. Due to the fact that this game's player base is the equivalent of a Chuck E. Cheese ball pit. The only difference being that I'm actually allowed to play Fortnite, and am no longer allowed to play at Chuck E. Cheese, because the restraining order says that I'm not allowed within 100 feet of its clientele. So I've given this video a much faster pace because I want to keep all those little kids, lovely young brains, engaged with the video from start to finish. My main goal with this video is to keep it as entertaining as possible, because the last thing I want to do is put you guys to sleep. What am I, Bill Cosby? <laughs> and if there's one thing I'm really good at, it's tricking children into thinking that I'm one of them. So, the youngest kid to leave a comment on my video We'll get some free V-Bucks and a bag of his favorite candy. So, hop on board the Ren's Reviews train, kids. Take a quick break from breastfeeding, grab your favorite color, and pop some Adderall, because we gotta talk about why Fortnite won't last. And so I'm sure everybody knows what Fortnite is, right? Just in case you don't, it's a game where a bus drops you and 99 other little kids onto an island, who are then forced to kill one another until there's only one person left standing. It's based off of the concept from a very popular movie. You might have heard of the movie. It's a movie called, yep, that's right, you guessed it, Lord of the Flies. But what might surprise some of you is Fortnite wasn't initially made to be a PvP experience. It was made to be this cooperative, third-person, tower defense, survival thing. I had no interest in that, and apparently neither did anybody else. So in a last-ditch effort to bring relevance to Fortnite, the game Epic Games had now been working on for six years, they whipped up their very own Battle Royale mode within just two months. And the rest is history. Now, all of this is very important to keep in mind, because the fact that this game was never intended to be for PvP really shows. And I think you'll start to notice that more and more as this video progresses. It's not all bad though, because this game does have some unique things about it, which is both a really good thing and a really bad thing. Apart from Metal Gear Solid Survive, I've never played a third person shooter where you can just create a wall out of thin air to prevent yourself from taking damage. The key to winning in this game is to get the high ground on your opponent. That way when you look down at them, you have a much higher chance of shooting them in the head for extra damage. And when they look up at you, you're a lot more difficult to shoot at because you have more cover than they do. But the only way to make that happen successfully is to build. So because of this, the bulk of Fortnite's gameplay revolves around building. And as a result of that, the ability to build on the fly is both this game's greatest strength as well as its greatest weakness. Because on one hand, it's really satisfying to try and master a new skill. Like I said, I've never experienced a mechanic quite like this before. But on the other hand, it means that every engagement you get into with another good player is most likely going to devolve into what I like to call a Fortnite fort fight. But since I've only put about 50 hours time into the game, and I'm not a particularly skilled builder, I wanted to make sure that I was getting all of my facts straight. That I'm not just talking out of my ass. So, I sought out a Twitch streamer named Named Grenader Jake, someone I consider to be a bit of a pro at the game. He's put hundreds of hours into Fortnite, and here's what he had to say on the matter. When good players fight each other, it's no longer really a shooter, it's kind of a build-off. They will burn through a thousand plus mats trying to gain the high ground on each other. There's some fights where people don't shoot each other for a full minute and a half because the whole objective is to get above your opponent. And I find that to be a little bit frustrating. I've always been somebody who plays shooters and I'm trying to get in fights with people. So to some extent, yeah, I do think that building's getting a little bit out of control. And while Fortnite fort fights can be fun to watch, 
as this is high skill, top tier gameplay we are looking at. It's also what nearly every engagement with another skilled player boils down to. It gets old, both from a gameplay standpoint and a spectator standpoint. Once you've seen one Fortnite fort fight, you've seen them all. Besides, I personally don't really find the building to be nearly as fun as actually shooting somebody. And in Fortnite, when you get shot in the back, you've got three options. Either run away, turn around and shoot back, or build. With building always being the most optimal. But I think that an exceptional multiplayer game is one that gives you several options to win each and every encounter, whether or not you're at a disadvantage. So take Halo for example. It's, it's rated M, so you've probably never played it before. But despite how it looks, Halo is not just a game where you shoot at each other. There's actually a lot more going on here. If somebody's shooting me in the back, I can turn around, whip him with a power drain, and battle rifle him down. Or I can drop down a bubble shield and shake up the encounter or I can just toss a grenade and end his career. Halo was a game of counterplay. There were no two fights that were alike, and it was a game of psychology, where you're trying to figure out what the other guy's gonna do so you can stop him from doing it. Now, you might think that it's weird that I'm comparing Halo to Fortnite, but I think it's an appropriate comparison. And I am in no way saying that Fortnite should be more like Halo. What I'm saying is, Fortnite needs to have more options in combat. The most heart-pounding fights in Fortnite always boil down to who can get higher than the other person. And when you shoot at somebody that you've got the drop on, only to have them pop a wall up to save them, that just doesn't feel satisfying. I just want to have a good old-fashioned fight. But these kids, they don't want to have a good old-fashioned fight, because I would duke on them every time, and they'd probably stop playing. Plus, Building also promotes camping as well, no, and nobody likes campers. The easiest win I've ever had in this game was when I just went to the top of a mountain, built a little structure, and camped out for a few minutes. I wasn't proud of myself for doing this, I didn't have fun doing it, but that's the most optimal way to play the game. I literally just sat up here while everybody else was forced to run up to me because I was lucky enough to have the circle favor my position, and that victory was a piece of cake. So every match is essentially the same. You drop in, and if you're lucky enough to find one, grab a gun, maybe snag a couple of kills, which does make for an exciting start. But then you always hit that mid-game lull where nothing's happening, and all you're doing is running and harvesting. There's so many stretches of time where absolutely nothing is happening. This isn't fun, and it's so aimless. This is the last thing I want out of a video game. But you know, it's not about me. It's about the children. So let me ask them. Hey, hey kids, be honest with me here. It's me, Ren. All right. Is this fun for you? And think about it. Is this really how you want to spend your precious free time after coming home from your job at the Nike factory? If it is, please, by all means, let me know how this is engaging to you. Because I would genuinely like to know, honestly. And the best comment? gets a free Runs Reviews t-shirt. But during slow moments like these, I autopilot. I start to daydream. I lose my interest in the game because my mind is now occupied with other things. There's nothing to keep me engaged here. I'm, I, I'm bored. And then that boredom quickly turns into frustration when I just get sniped in the back or shot at by some infant hiding in a bush. The fact that I can literally go 10 minutes, sometimes even more, without seeing or hearing a single other person in a multiplayer game is ridiculous. The mid-game lol didn't used to be this bad. It got slowed down pretty drastically ever since they put Tilted Towers into the game, because Tilted instantly became the place to drop, since I guess it currently has the most items, therefore giving people a better chance at finding something worthwhile. But now because of that, sometimes within one minute and a half of landing, we're already down to a measly 50 survivors. Half of everybody that entered this game is already dead. That's a problem. Now the mid-game lol isn't as much of an issue when you play this game with a good friend, since you can goof around with each other during that downtime. I'm gonna scout lying. ahead, because I don't think anyone's here, but if they are, I can handle them, because I'm 26. But fun with friends does not equate to fun game. It equates to fun friend. I mean, I could have a fun time playing Far Cry 5 with my boy Pixel, but does that mean Far Cry 5 is a good game? God, no, of course not. I do have a feeling though that Epic Games is trying to work on fixing the pacing of this game, so this portion of the video might be out of date someday, which is why I kept it nice and brisk, like a 5 second skippable advertisement. Shotgun fights are the worst, 
especially on console. And if a fight doesn't turn into a build-off, it almost always devolves into a shotgun battle, which usually feel pretty awkward. So on console, when you jump in the air, it turns off your auto-aim until you hit the ground again. So it's pretty tough to get a beat on him when you're in the air and the auto-aim just turns off. But then when you land, the other guy jumps up in the air too. He can't track you now very well either because he doesn't have auto-aim. And now I can't track him very well because I jumped again. So you get these ridiculous looking battles where he can't hit me and I have trouble hitting him. It not only looks terrible, but it also feels terrible. And this is where building comes in. But sometimes, again, especially on console, when you're really close to somebody like this, the building can feel really wonky. You can't whip down and put the wall where you need to put it. But even then, I don't want to build. In that situation, to me, building feels more like a crutch. Like holding onto the bar when you play DDR at the arcade? That bar is a crutch. Look at these cowards. Holding onto the bar like some little old lady at her physical therapy. Real men, true men, like myself, play DDR barless. DDR is also a great exercise move. I think one way to fix shotgun fights would be to give us the ability to melee. Not with the pickaxe though. Like maybe allow us to melee each other with the shotgun itself and have that melee stun lock an enemy for like a half second or so, maybe a little more. It'd be very similar to how it worked in Gears of War. You know, the other franchise that Epic Games made. I haven't played on console, but I could see what you mean. I did play Gears, so I know what that would look like. Yeah. I think that'd be fine on PC too, but I do think that it would be kind of cool to give the player who instinctually melees that advantage. If, they, if you could melee, I, I don't see any issue with it. I think it would add a little bit of skill gap too, because yeah. if a player identifies that, hey, I might be in danger here, I need to get a little, a little bit closer and make sure I hit them so I get that stun. Uh, that's gonna do nothing but add skill gap, which I think is nothing but good. You you like my idea, that's great. That's going in, for sure. <laughs> I think that the ability to melee somebody would add a whole nother element to the game, because you could try to get close to your opponent, maybe try to trick him into hitting you, so that you can bait out his melee, so that you can shoot him while he's stuck in the melee animation, and that's just one possibility. It's a feature that I think would really help this game long term, and like Jake said, increase the game's skill gap. If you ask me, Bloom has no place in any video game. And in case you don't know what Bloom is, I'll boil it down for you. What Bloom does is expands your crosshair when you shoot, meaning that the center of your crosshair can be dead on target. But there's a good possibility that none of your shots will land on your opponent due to the random nature of Bloom. So instead of your bullets going to the center of the crosshair, like they would in almost every single other video game ever, your shots have a chance to just randomly go anywhere within that expanded crosshair. And sure, sometimes Bloom can work in your favor, but even then, how is that fair to the guy that I just accidentally shot in the head? And when that does happen, I just feel like I'm being patronized because I'm being rewarded for having inferior skills. I didn't earn that kill, but it also means that I'm not truly getting in my much needed practice because the game is taking care of all of that for me. But I think that Bloom is also largely what gives this game such mass appeal. Because of Bloom, I can lose a gunfight to a six year old even though my crosshair is right on the kid's diaper. He essentially shot me on accident, just like his father's sperm accidentally hit his mother's ovary. At the end of the day, Bloom is not helpful for anybody. It patronizes inferior players by handing them free kills, and it upsets pro players when none of their shots land because of it. It has absolutely no place in any multiplayer game, and nothing feels worse than losing a fight to Bloom. When you die in this game, that's it, man. It's game over. Every weapon you've picked up, all that progress you've made, every scrap you've survived, is all gone. It was all for nothing. You can't just respawn and try again, you're out. Which can make cheap deaths feel extra frustrating. So when you get killed because of lag, which despite my pretty decent internet speed, does happen, less often now than it used to admittedly, but it still happens. Or if you die because somebody exploited some dumb new mechanic like double pumping, is that back now? Are they getting rid of that? I honestly don't know. But either way, it feels really disheartening. Especially when you get dumb crap like this happening. Uh, yeah, you- what? 
So now I have to enter a new lobby because some kid shot me through a wall? Or some other kid shot me through a wall? Or I just fell over dead for literally no reason? Why would somebody want to put themselves through this? And this stuff wouldn't be so bad if I could just respawn and give it another go. But that's just not the way the game works. And nothing's worse than dropping in hot, going through several rooms trying to find a gun, only to find absolutely no weapons, and then get killed by somebody else who was lucky enough to find a gun. Stuff like this is enough to drive me away from the game. And I'm sure I'm not alone in that. Stuff like this genuinely pisses me off to no end. A multiplayer game with permadeath in it needs to perform absolutely flawlessly. Now, I've never bought a single microtransaction in my life, and I'm not about to buy some for this game. Now, I don't talk about microtransactions very much on my channel, because other people do it for me. People like Jim Sterling, Young Ya, yeah, and this gay wad. Those guys already do a more than stellar job of talking about microtransactions, so I have nothing new or interesting to add to the table that these guys haven't already said time and time again. But due to the fact that this game is free, it gets a free pass in terms of microtransactions. But it still worries me a little bit, because the amount of money that they're charging for some of these skins is out of this world. $12 for a glider, 15 bucks for a Highland Warrior skin. Are you serious? For that much money, you could literally buy a chastity belt to keep you safe from your uncle during the next family reunion. And Fortnite YouTubers don't help with this matter either, because they actively tell kids to buy these skins. So as you can see, uh, the Rex skin, the legendary Rex skin is now available in store. If you want to go and get this, I highly recommend doing it really soon because I mean, we don't know when these skins will um, cycle back into the store. So let's go over my opinion at all. And so clearly season two is ending. So if you've gotten the Black Knight, pretty much is gonna be your last chance to ever get it. So I recommend that everyone gets the Black Knight right now. And I don't condone this because as microtransactions appear more and more, especially to the younger kids, that younger generation will become more and more comfortable with buying microtransactions. They'll grow more accustomed to seeing them in video games and in the future, who knows, maybe publishers can start pushing microtransactions even harder than they have been. And you know, that's just speculation. I could be totally wrong about that, but it's something to think about. It's something that does worry me. And there is the battle pass, which I actually approve of. I don't have it myself, but it does seem kind of cool, since it gives you additional challenges to work toward, and you actually get the satisfaction of unlocking items yourself, as opposed to having mommy buy them with her credit card. But even then, as cool as some of them look, these skins don't do anything for me. I need something meaningful to grind for. If they were exclusive skins that you got for your first 10, 25, 100 wins, and so on, I would consider grinding that out just to prove that I truly am the god of video games. Yeah. You can be the god of video games. I, I am. I think you I are. am. Yeah. You're definitely the god of video games. Thank you so much. I think that something as simple as rewarding skins for skills would be a great way to keep people engaged in the game long term. But I don't think they'll do it. Because I know if I got a skin for getting 100 solo wins, I would never take it off. Which would then de-incentivize me from purchasing additional skins. That's just me being cynical. So prove me wrong, Epic. Reward skins for skills. Let's see it happen. One of the most important aspects of any multiplayer game is the map design. It's one of the things that can make repeat matches fun time and time again. So yes, I'm gonna bring up Halo again, but trust me, it's applicable. Each map in Halo 2 and 3 was meticulously designed to be fun and diverse each and every time you play it. It's pretty obvious to us when, when we start working on these maps that they have to be fun for the hundredth and the, the two hundredth and the thousandth time. Everything mattered. The angles, the spawn locations, the placement of power weapons and vehicles all coalesced together and made for exciting fights match after match. And each map had a learning curve to it. Take Lockout, for example. There's a little spot here where you can crouch jump up onto this doorway and use that as an alternate route to get up to this area here and surprise your opponent. A majority of the player base never even knew about stuff like this. And yes, this was intentionally placed here by Bungie. Every single map in those games had something like this. And as you discover little things like these, new little secrets, you start to look at the map in a whole new way. And that brings a lot of freshness to the overall experience. Each map was tightly built and heavily playtested to ensure maximum balance, fun, 
and replayability. Now, let me reiterate this. I am in no way saying that Fortnite needs to be more like Halo. I am saying that the map design in Fortnite does not allow for diverse gameplay, something that is a must for any multiplayer game. Fortnite's map was built in two months, and it really shows. The map just sort of exists. I don't think it even has a name. No area was designed with certain combat scenarios or gimmicks in mind. And sure, it's got cute little names with some good alliteration on them, you know, like Pleasant Parkinson's. As cute as all the names are, my point is, no area was designed with a certain combat scenario or gimmick in mind. And part of the issue is the map's size. When you have a map as massive as Fortnite's, it doesn't really receive the care that it deserves. It's just a big old map that clearly wasn't built with the game's mechanics in mind, you know, like nearly every single other multiplayer game that exists. It's essentially just a blank open canvas. And as a result of that, I got sick of the map pretty early on. And yeah, you could argue that the building mechanic does make every match feel different. And that is true to an extent. But like I said earlier, that whole building mechanic thing just kind of gets old after a little while. Kind of like that goldfish you forgot to feed. But let's say that hypothetically, Epic Games were to make a whole new map. Sure, it would make headlines, Ninja would talk about it in a Twitch Highlights YouTube video, and YouTube would recommend it to me three times, but ultimately, a new map wouldn't really matter all that much, since the actual building mechanic itself throws a pretty sizable wrench into the entire idea of map design. But you know, maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I am wrong. Maybe Epic Games will create a new map that takes the building mechanic, or even maybe the shooting mechanics, to a whole nother level. But even if they did that, you would still have one major issue. That the map design can't accommodate for every possible scenario. They can never predict where how many people are going to land in one spot each game. Because sometimes you might get 20 people clumped up in one area at the beginning of the game or the end of a game, and sometimes you might just get one person all by himself in a different match, at that very same spot. There's no flow to the map, and as far as I know, there's no way to competently create a compelling map around that fact. Which isn't just a flaw with Fortnite itself, but it's a flaw with the entire battle royale genre. Something they gotta figure out. One way to fix that would just be to add spawn points into the game and completely ditch the parachuting in concept completely, but I don't ever see them doing that and I think that's part of the draw of battle royale anyhow. But I will give credit where credit is due. The map in Fortnite is very aesthetically pleasing, whereas the maps in every other battle royale game look like a pile of your baby brother's used huggies. If I had to look at this all day, I'd be wearing sunglasses too. But Fortnite does do a good job of changing up the scenery a little bit every now and then by making changes to the map. I like that. But why is all of this an issue? Why make a video about this game? I'll tell you why. Because this game is the hot new trend that all the AAA devs and publishers are chasing after now. This massively flawed game has become one of the most popular in the world. So naturally, all the big boys, like EA and Activision, are going to do whatever they can to ride this wave. Whatever happened to the days where the money didn't matter as much, when developers weren't chasing trends, but trying to pioneer their own. These developers would create trends out of passion, straight from the heart. And those kinds of trends truly are the best trends. Now I have been bashing on this game, but I'm mostly focusing on the negatives of the game. It's a fun little game, but the most fun I've had in Fortnite didn't come from the game itself, but instead came from the satisfaction of learning how to play games in a completely different way. Because I recently got a brand new PC, and I haven't played a game on the PC since Half-Life 2, and I played that on a trackball mouse. So I've really never played anything seriously on a mouse and keyboard before. So each time I logged on and felt an improvement in my aim with the mouse, or felt like using the keyboard became more and more natural, I felt really good about that. It's really satisfying to feel yourself overcoming a new challenge. And like I said, I'm still nowhere near as good as I'd like to be, not even close. But here's a clip of me a few months ago. And here's a clip of me now. Oh, yeah, the peak. <coughs> I timed it out. If it weren't for me trying to learn mouse and keyboard, I would have stopped playing this game a long time ago. But Ren, I hear you ask, if the game is so massively flawed like you say, then why, oh why, is it so popular? Why, that's a great question, little girl. And it's one I've given a lot of thought to. 
There are three key reasons for this game's meteoric success, with the first being the most obvious. Fortnite is a free game, which is a huge draw, especially for the younger audience, since their parents don't have to buy the game for their kids. So then these kids can play with their friends, since they also have immediate access to it as well. The very concept of Battle Royale is perfect for video games, and it appeals to that competitive desire that most gamers have to win, dominate, and succeed. People play match after match to chase that dragon, to win. Because being the only person out of 100 to emerge victorious feels absolutely incredible each and every time. It's the only thing that keeps me coming back, to feel that victory. Oh my god, it's me versus one other! Oh, sh**. <laughs> oh my god. If there weren't so much tequila in my blood, I would have gotten that guy. But it isn't the game that gives me that feeling. It's the genre itself. I'd feel the same way whether or not I won a match in this game, PUBG, or any other early access game out there for that matter. Which brings me to the third and final reason as to why this game is so unbelievably popular. Right now, the gaming industry is in a pretty bad state. And yeah, there are a few gems here and there that are worth playing. But most AAA releases launch in a very buggy, barren, broken state. A state of decay, if you will. And they have been for the past five years or so. I've said this before, but it bears repeating, that the bar of quality has been set so low now that people will put themselves through something as broken as this just so that they can chase that dragon. So in comparison to all the garbage we've been getting lately, Fortnite looks and plays like a dream. It also helps that there aren't really any good new multiplayer games out there right now. I think it kind of says a lot that old games like Rainbow Six Siege, League of Legends, and GTA are some of the most played games out there right now. It kind of makes it seem like there hasn't been that much between then and now that has really grabbed people's attention. But maybe that's just me. So because of everything I've talked about in this video, I don't think Fortnite will make it very far past the summer of 2018. Think about it. The kids aren't in school anymore, so they're gonna play it to death over the summer break and they're just gonna start to get sick of it. Then in September, real games, big boy games, are gonna start coming out, and people are gonna be playing those. And then in October, Black Ops 4 is coming out with its very own Battle Royale mode. Now, I've certainly never been a fan of Call of Duty, but if it has a smooth launch, no BS, and relatively balanced mechanics, I do think it is possible that it could dethrone Fortnite. I also think Epic Games knows this, and maybe they got something up their sleeve. And you know, maybe every single issue I've talked about in this video will get fixed up at some point. Because that's the thing about Epic Games. They are a stellar developer. It really does seem like they care deeply about their game. And like they really listen to their community, which is important. They try to improve upon this game each and every week. It's truly impressive to me. It's something that Bungie should really be taking notes on. I, it takes those guys three months to tune a damn weapon class. But that's besides the point, because no matter how many shiny new trinkets they add into Fortnite, no matter how much fun it is to ride downhill in a shopping cart, these things do nothing to change the base gameplay, which is a good thing, keeps the game pure, keeps it familiar, but it's also the thing that people might soon grow tired of. I guess we'll find out. But that does it for this video, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. To close it out, I'm gonna play the outro that I recorded while interviewing Grenader Jake. E3's coming up, so I'll talk to you guys about that probably. No promises. But until then, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Jake, for doing this. Yeah, it was my pleasure, man. I had a blast. Good. I'm glad you did. But when you're done here with this video, go check him out, twitch.tv slash GrenaderJake. He has a very, very nice community, a very warm, accepting community. Not only that, but he himself is very jovial, very nice, great, great kid. And on top of that, he's absolutely excellent at the game. Any game he plays, he's, he's a wizard. So go check him out, you won't be sorry. Tell him Ren's Reviews sent you. Drop him a fat, fat dono so that he can feed his dog. <laughs> and I'm, I'm blushing, man. You can't see, but I'm blushing. Good. <laughs> go, go see him blush right now, live on stream. <laughs> Thanks again, Jake. Hey, thank you, Ren. Appreciate it, man.